Welcome back to Plus Politics. The Chandler Good Government, uh, gov Governance uh, Index has ranked Nigeria as the third worst governed country in the world. The CGGI ranked Nigeria 102 out of 104 countries with a score of 0.319 points ahead of Zimbabwe and Venezuela. The report noted that the ability to adequately stem corruption is the strongest indicator of good governance. Worldwide, Finland topped the list with 0.848 points ahead of Switzerland and Singapore. But on the continent, Mauritius scored 0.576 uh, uh, points, placing it at number 38 on the log and as Africa's best performer. Joining us this evening to discuss is uh, Agogo Obo, a broadcast journalist, and Andy Akotive, uh, social reformer. Thank you both for your time and thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Agogo, I'm going to start with you. A lot of, um, a lot of times when we have uh, reports like this, uh, the very first thing that people do is to check for the, um, you know, where the Chandler, uh, was called Chandler Good, Gover Good Governance Index is and uh, what exactly is all about. Does he have the credibility to even rate anybody? So let's start with that. Do you think, or would you say it has a good enough rating um, um, uh, as an institution to rate Nigeria? Absolutely, it is. It is. Um, so, what we say um, is that every time you have got reputable international organizations and individuals rates or rating Nigeria, what you hear from the government is that they try to discredit those organizations um, as not being reputable enough to rate us. I was looking at that report today, and it was with a very heavy heart that, you know, I was reading that report, given the fact that countries that yesterday, um, we, 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 we would not even stand side by side, shoulder by shoulder with Nigeria, today are way ahead of us. When I was growing up as a child, if every time I took my report home, and my father saw that I came 7th, 11th, or 15th, his question was always that, who are those that are ahead of you? Are they people that are born by parents that do certain things that are different from what I do to you and your folks and your siblings? Are there people who have got more brains than yourself? Why are they ahead of you? My father sought to find that out every time I took my report card to him. And every time I did, he always made me understand that so long as you've got one brain and you've got fathers and mothers like you have got, you have also got the capacity to do as well as they are doing or even do better than them. We are wondering today that in our case, do we have father? Do we have the mother? Do we have parents that indeed are catering to Nigeria so that Nigeria can do better than others? Ahead of only Venezuela and Zimbabwe. It is pathetic, absolutely pathetic oh. that on every ranking, on every index today, Nigeria is taking the plunge. It is lugubrious, it is sardonic, it is preposterous, and it speaks to the fact that the father is not present in the house. All right, hold on, um, Mr. Kotivi. I'm going to go back to bringing in um, Agogo Obo. Uh, thanks for joining us once again. Um, in the past, Transparency International... Um, and other um, um, uh, organizations like that have brought, you know, about similar reports. Oh, Steve, I can't hear you. The response from the Minister of Information a lot of times, you know, is always that those reports are unfair, seeing the great strides that President Mohamed Buhari has taken and the current administration has taken um, with infrastructure and with the economy, getting us out of recession and some, some of all those other things. Um, would you say that, you know, that should be a similar response this time? Do you think it's unfair to rate Nigeria this way, seeing how much you know the government has invested in in infrastructure and the, and the likes? And this is to uh, um, well, Andy once again. I guess we've lost Agogo um, again. So you are asking if it's fair to rate Nigeria the way they are rated? Or yes, the minister of the minister of information, you know, very often would say it's unfair when organisations like this rate Nigeria because they, you know, seem to ignore the great strides the current administration has taken in moving Nigeria forward. You, 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 know, you know that saying when they say you play the ostrich. 
you know, sometimes Nigerians will use that expression not understanding the exact meaning of what it is. You know, the ostrich by design hides the face. You know, thinking that others are not seeing, you know, um, 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 the other part of her body. Um, she puts her face in debris, puts her face, you know, away from the others that are looking. Indeed, others are seeing other parts of the ostrich's body. This is exactly what the Minister of Information is doing. Together with most of the officials of this, of this government. See, let me tell you. If you went to the UK today and you asked that they should tell you what is the formula, the physics formula for light, it will be the same with what you would see in England. It will be the same with what you would see in China. Okay? If that is too highfalutin, if you went to China today and you asked them what was the chemical component for paracetamol, it is the same that you will see in London, it is the same that you will see in Canada. Why have I said all of this? I said this to say to you that the index for measuring the best amongst the countries is known to our Nigerian leaders. Come out simply and say that you have done better than these measurement standards that were used against you. For instance, in terms of leadership, provision of leadership, show to us that you have provided leadership. In terms of accountability, show to us that you have provided accountability. In terms of the number of people that get killed by terrorist activities, show to us that you have a minimum level. If you look at that report, you will see what they use to measure the rest of the countries of the world. Ministers of Information should speak to those issues. I should stop thinking that Nigerians are all dumb. Speak to those issues. There are standards that they have used to make this reading, that they have used to make this their finding, that they have used to make this conclusion. There are standards that are known. Come and debate these standards and show to these people that have done better in these areas. All right. Guess so, what? Someone would never do that. Some, because some other thing. we have always playing the ostrich. I'm going to read um, uh, from the report. One of the things it says here is massive, widespread, and pervasive corruption affected all levels of government, including the judiciary and security Absolutely. services. It also uh, spoke about the uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, which exposed the strengths and weaknesses in institutions, laws, and leadership in countries uh, you know, like Nigeria. Um, so it, it takes us back to the conversation, you know, of uh, corruption and the fight against, um, you know, anti-corruption, uh, fight against corruption in Nigeria. Um, haven't we in any way taken, if, you know, any steps, you know, ahead? Uh, we, we've, you know, set up the Treasury single account. We've been able to retrieve a lot of stolen funds, billions and billions of naira, according to the Minister of Information. And, of course, uh, former EFCC Chairman Ibrahim Magu. Uh, this shouldn't these things count for is something? This government is so corrupt that they make the corruption under good luck Jonathan's administration infantile. Imagine what they said with the uh, school feeding program. How much they said they used to feed children who were at home. Imagine what they spent with, they went to Bahrain to go and design logo for airline. People forgotten that. They went to Bahrain to design logo, millions of naira. They guided us and told us that Nigeria area was going to come back. What has happened? This government is so corrupt that I am praying very fervently All right. that Hold God on. will give us a good president come 2023. I don't know how that is going to happen, All right, but Andy, I'm praying that God gives us a good president. Andy, uh, I guess we're all praying together. Uh, let's uh, bring in Agogo Obo. Uh, I don't know if you're also praying, uh, along with Mr. Agbotive, for a good president in 2023. Uh, but I want your reaction, so we've not been able to hear from you this evening. Um, I was uh, hoping that there would be some way that we could at least put forward the great strides of the Nigerian government in corruption with our economy. We somehow struggled out of a recession. Um, and of course, uh, you know, the m amount of money that have been recovered in the fight against corruption Shouldn't these things count for something, you know, when we are being rated um, by these organizations? All right, uh, interesting um, conversation so far. But 
I, I think if we put into perspective what the real issues are facing the Nigerian state, you look at maybe um, issues concerning uh, planning. Nigeria's got a population of over uh, 200 million people. Uh, one in five people in Africa is from Nigeria. And if you look at all the development indices where, if you look at the Human Development Index, which has been running for several decades now, Nigeria has measured pretty low on all of the major indices, education, healthcare, infrastructure, all of the things that matter to everyone, housing. The deficits are so huge that for any seismic change to happen, you would have to match um, um, resources with planning. And so far, it hasn't happened. Even the country's warehouse data organization as far as the country's data is, just take for example, the NBS does on a monthly basis in terms of how spending happens. You see that we are caught between the rock and the hat place in the way spendings have happened. Last year alone, Nigeria made 3.4 trillion naira. We spent 3 trillion naira servicing debts, leaving 400 trillion naira for capital and recurring expenditure. They asked me where the 400 billion naira rather, uh, most of it probably got into, uh, into re recurring expenditure. If you look at how much we borrowed, five trillion naira, we spent four trillion uh, paying salaries. There remainder one point two trillion we said we put into also uh, 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 capital expenses. It shows it sort of dire straits uh, the country's economy is. All right, um, we seem to have lost uh, Agogo Obo again. It's it's a struggle uh, getting you to uh, speak with us this evening. Uh, I was just going to quickly share. Uh, from uh, January 2021, uh, response by the Minister uh, of Information, Lai Mohammed, fault in Transparency International's uh, re, um, rating, rather, on uh, Nigeria's uh, corruption. And, of course, uh, the news story there, you know, back then in January said, uh, Lai Mohammed faults Transparency International, says rating not a true reflection of anti-corruption agenda. Uh, Mr. Akpotivi, I guess you're still with us? Absolutely, I'm here. All right, so... Uh, while we wait for Agogo Abu, um, Obo to join us again, uh, quick, quickly also, you know, you were speaking about how you want the minister to respond. How do you think that they should respond, uh, you know, at a time like this? And is it important that uh, the Nigerian government, at a, you know, they have two years to go. Do you, is it important that they clarify on some of the, you know, things that they have done to show Nigerians that these ratings are false? Should I show you? I do not think that they even have the capacity to objectively and adequately respond to some of these issues. These people came into power through propaganda. You know how you know how foreign miners, quote and unquote, you know how they guide their 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 people. Um, so they will give to you what is not real and present it as though it is real and take money from you. The people presented to Nigerians what was not real and took votes from Nigerians. And they are unable to sustain that lie. Today I was watching videos of Elufai, um, um, Fasola, Lai Mohamed, uh, Bola Tunubu, and a host of them. All that they said a friend of mine had compiled and sent it to my inbox and said, watch, all that they said yesterday that they were going to do. Today, they are singing a different song. A president that contested three times. You want to tell me that he did not know the problems of the country. Today, he's the president the second time and they are excusing themselves away, not us. They are throwing us into the abyss. There is right. clearly the lack of direction as to where we should be going in this country by the current leadership. All right. It's a failure that is monumental. It's a failure exactly. that is palpable. It is a failure that can be seen by the blind. A failure that is so loud that it can be heard by the deaf. All right. Um, Andy Akpotive, um, we wish we had more time, but unfortunately we need to go. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Apologies, uh, Agogo Obo, for, of course, the network issues that you had. We really uh, would have loved to speak with you. But, Andy, thank you once again for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thanks for staying with us. We'll, we'll go on a short break.
And uh, when we come back, of course, uh, there would be a little bit more here on the uh, program Plus Politics. We'll listen to what Nigerians have to say about the eventual uh, issues concerning Minister Issa Pantami. I don't think you will definitely want to sack him because he's, he's uh, you see, already is the Pantami in his government is part of the cabal that is in his government. No, that is based on the person. The president, he should use his own discretion. He should use his own discretion. Being a president, for you to be a president, you should be able to know how to lead your people. So he should, he should use his discretion to do that. The president usually acts slow. And I think for me, if, if somebody has been found to have a questionable, um, you know, past or anything, we have a lot of people in this country that can be ministers. If, if one, yes, they might say he has repented, but nobody can actually tell, tell about that really. But for me, if it's creating uh, an issue, you know, and whether through investigation or so is found to be true. Nigeria, I know we are not used to resigning. So it's easier for the president to just tell him, please move aside, let somebody else do it. I don't think the president will do that. But that was supposed to do. God, they've disappointed us. I don't think the president will have any any contrary issue being the man uh, in question that he should be sacked or not. Because before now, I think the minister was there. So before now, I think he has been doing whatever he's supposed to do. So for him to now come out and say that word, I mean, to say that opinion, I think it's of no use for the president to sack the minister. Let the minister continue his work and let the president also continue his work. What we are looking for in this country is peace. Well, with the preponderance of uh, atrocities being perpetrated by the bandits, Boko Haram, and all these terrorists, and the, the view of uh, Issa Pantami on the past about uh, these terrorists and bandits, I think from my, personally, I think the, the, the president should remove him as a minister in this country. Shake it now. Different Nigerians sharing their thoughts on Issa Pantami. And now, my take. The Chandler Good Government Index, Transparency International, or even the regular Nigerian on the street, whichever is your source for rating Nigeria, all sing about the same song. Our nation is currently going through maybe its most troubling times. For those struggling, or rather from those struggling daily to find a meal, to those mourning loved ones lost to terror. And of course, to those also begging for the release of their loved ones in captivity. Bandits, terrorists, kidnappers, ethnic and religious tension, poverty, injustice. The list is endless. Nigerians are dying, soldier, soldiers even, you know, and of course our security agents also dying, even from friendly fire. We have gone past the stage where we expect anything so much from the government. We now just want and pray each day to survive as Nigerians. The Nigerian government needs to see the dangers that lie ahead. Even if the people are too burnt out to make demands, the government needs to open its eyes and see where we are headed as a nation. And that's my take. Thank you very much for joining us on the program this evening and uh, see you next time.